Uh, the, the title of my message tonight is about failure. Uh, I've got uh, some scripture verses that we're going to be going over. Um, it was something that I thought about talking of, uh, you know, just doing a message on, and then I, I kind of changed my mind, and a couple things popped up, and just I kind of felt led to maybe go back and, and talk about that. So, um, I've, yeah, I've picked out a, a few scripture verses. We're going to read the, the very first one, kind of helping us establish what, what failure is. Uh, Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So, uh, you know, we, we strive to glorify God, to, you know, attempt to be perfect. And, and that really holds us back because we start to put ourselves down and realize that, you know, we, we can't be perfect and, and our failures start to build up. Um, from Job 14.1, man that is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. So, you know, I'm really going on the, the high note here, you know, some, some really uplifting verses, you know, we're, we're talking about failure and trouble, but uh, we'll, we'll see if we can't turn that around. Um, failure can take many forms. Uh, it can be big things. We can have business or career, fa- career failures that leave us in financial ruin. Uh, it can be failed relationships that take a toll on us emotionally. Uh, it can be personal goals that we strive for or sacrifice for, but in the end fall short. Uh, January is generally pretty full of failure. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, New Year's resolutions and, you know, with a couple weeks in and we feel like failures, you know. So, um, they, I, I'm sorry? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, it's also a lot of little things. You know, we can fail, fail to put our turn signal on or come to a complete stop. We can, you know fail to get up on time or, or, you know, just fail to keep a promise to a friend. There, there can be a lot of little things that build up too. Um, from Scripture, we know, we know we're not promised uh, easy times uh, in our life here on earth. Uh, from John 16.33, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So it, I know I lose sight of that. You know, I, I want peace. I want comfort. Um, you know, I don't like pain. Uh, so I, I try and avoid things. I, I'm big on avoiding conflicts. I, I try and stay out of that. But, uh, you know, we know from Scripture, Jesus has taught us that we will have tribulation here on earth. It is, it is uh, a fallen world that we live in. Uh, we'll all face hardship, turmoil, disaster, want, regret, sorrow, pain. Some of this will come from things out of our immediate control, a flood, a fire, illness, accidents. But failure is unique in that most of it is often very personal. It's usually directly tied to an action or inaction that we've done. Because of this personal nature, Satan is able to use failure to wound us deeply and test our faith. Uh, One failure can often lead to another. It's like a domino effect of Getting fired from a job can lead to financial strain, which can lead to relational strain. If we allow this to snowball, we soon find ourselves in a place of deep despair and realize that we can't fix it on our own. The truth is we could never fix it on our own. Any of these problems, we just keep trying to lean our own strength and understanding. Uh, Let's talk a, a little bit about a couple biblical failures. Uh, let's read from Matthew 26. 36 through 46. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto his disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceedingly exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep and saith unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again a second time and prayed, saying, O my father, If this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, 
for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples and saith unto him, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at, he is at hand that doth betray me. So in this, you know, I, I, I can admit, you know, it's late at night, uh, a, a nice quiet garden. Um, you know, you've had activities all day, a lot of stress. And, you know, Jesus, the, your, your rabbi, your teacher is, is going off to pray. And he just says, you know, just watch with me, pray with me. And, you know, his, and he, he understands, he, you know, he even says the, the flesh is weak. And uh, his disciples fall asleep. He wakes them up, asks them to, to pray again. And again, they, they fall asleep. They, they fail to, to kind of keep watch with him. And, uh, you know, I'm sure they, they felt really bad about that. Um, you know, it's their human failing. And uh, I'm sure that unnerved them. They, you know, they, they certainly want to follow Jesus and, and do what he, he is telling them. But uh, they, they struggle with it. And, and here are his disciples who've seen him work miracles. And, uh, and they're struggling. Um, one of the, the main ones I, I kind of want to focus a little bit on tonight is the next one. John 13, 37 38. Peter said unto him, Lord, why cannot I follow thee now? I will lay down my life for thy sake. Jesus answered him, Wilt thou lay down thy life for my sake? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, The cock shall not crow till thou hast denied me thrice. So I know growing up, I would read this verse or, or hear it preached. And, you know, I think, oh, I, you know, I wouldn't deny Christ, right? I, I would, I'd be standing, you know. And so, you know, you know when, when you're young, you're like, yeah, you know, you, you kind of feel that. And, and I don't know how I would react if, if I was put in that same situation. Um, you know, you, you see uh, the man who you've seen do miracles, arrested, taken away, uh, you know he's going to be crucified, put to death, and um, you know he he denies knowing Christ three times, um, and, and Jesus knew this was going to happen. Um, he it was not a shock, and and he understood. And uh, um, in this case, God is using that failure as a tool. Um, our God is faithful. Our God provides grace and mercy, and most importantly, forgiveness. If we allow him to work in our lives, God will use our failure as a tool to draw us closer to him. Um, failure helps us learn. If we learn from our failures, accept our shortcomings, ask for forgiveness, and commit to trust in God, failure becomes our most important tool for growth. Uh, during the most recent men's group meeting, uh, we just had it uh, a Saturday ago, uh, Robert shared with us a quote. Uh, he said, a smart person learns from his mistakes, a wise person learns from others' mistakes, and a fool does neither. So it was just kind of a, a, a quote, and it kind of fit with what I was talking about a little bit. Um, using our own personal experiences with failure is so important, but it's critical to use the wisdom of Scripture to learn from others' mistakes to grow closer to God. Uh, a very good friend of mine uh, from, from my scouting days and, and college uh, was majoring in astrophysics at Ohio State. Uh, we were roommates for a few years, uh, but during his freshman year, his very first quarter at Ohio State, he took Physics 101, the, the very first one, um, and he failed it, his very first quarter. He got uh, distracted, is a good word for it, uh, didn't focus on his studies. There's you know a lot of things that uh, um, you can you know, spend your time doing, and, and studying wasn't one of him during his, his first quarter there. Um, it's obviously a very first, or a very important class if you want to be an astrophysicist, is to pass physics 101. So he, uh, he worked with his academic advisor and uh, used something called the freshman forgiveness rule. And essentially, if you fail a class during your freshman year, uh, they send you through, uh, you know, a little bit of training. He, uh, he took a class on study skills, on note-taking, and uh, the next fall he was able to retake that class. It doesn't show up on his transcript, and he was able to, to get a, a new grade. So he, uh, he passed the class, uh, 
it took him uh, an extra year, but he did graduate with a degree in astronomy and physics. So uh, he, uh, he used that event in his life, that failure, and he turned it into something good. He would uh, come back from class and recopy all his notes um, in, into a new notebook. That helped him to review and, and memorize the things he was learning. Um, he was able to learn and grow from this failure. Uh, he may have been embarrassed slightly with his, his failure. I, I know he was, but he didn't let that hold him back. Uh, he could have given up, decided things were too hard, and, uh, and I knew some friends on, on my floor a couple doors down uh, that was in engineering with me. Uh, things got a little tough, and uh, he started just kind of focusing on other things. He kind of got a little side job and then just, just uh, left school. So. Um, but my friend didn't, didn't give up. He was determined to succeed. Um, he reached out for help, and that, that really aided him in accomplishing his goal. Um, I know I often let fear hold me back. Uh, it might be a situation where there's an opportunity to share the word with someone, to, uh, to spread the gospel, to maybe just minister to somebody. Uh, but, but failure, fear of that failure holds me back. Um, uh, it's precisely those times that we need to rely on God being in control to allow him to use us to further his kingdom. We need our faith in Jesus as our Savior to dispel the lies of Satan about our failures and to learn from our failures. Uh, we must also be willing to help others who are dealing with failure. Uh, it's in our nature at times to see someone else's failure as a way to lift us up, to make us feel good. Uh, but it doesn't work like that. Scripture tells us to love and help our enemy and not to relish in their failures. Uh, Proverbs 24, 17 and 18. Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth, lest the Lord see it, and it displease him, and he turn away his wrath from him. So I, I know I got to turn off certain YouTube videos that I watch, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm glad, you know. See. But, uh, you know, it, it can get, uh, it's tempting at times to to relish in someone else's troubles, but uh, um, Scripture is very, very clear on that. Um, just as God redeems our failures, we can use failure to guide others. As a father, I try hard to provide for my wife and children and to keep them safe, but a godly friend of mine taught me a valuable lesson about allowing my children to experience failure so that they could grow. Uh, I had a friend, Donnie. He, had, uh, se he has seven children. A uh, few of them are uh, a bit older than mine. I, at the time, uh, I want to say Sam was probably uh, seven or eight, and his son uh, um, was probably 13 or 14. Uh, we went with him. Uh, his daughter had refurbished a little sailboat, so he took us out on Allen Creek. We did some sailing. We came back to the dock, and we were going to let the little kids do some fishing. So he had all the fishing gear in his car, the tackle and, and the bait. And so he told his, his son to go prepare everything, get the fishing poles ready, get it ready for the little kids, help them cast it to kind of take care of that. So, um, you know, I, wanting to help, wanting to make sure everything, you know, went, went well and kids could, could catch fish. I, I go over and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to help, you know, put the fishing rods together and bait. I know how to do that. You know, I'm going to help them out. So my friend Donnie, uh, you know, kindly, uh, just just asked that I step back, and uh, he, you know, informed me that he was teaching his son, uh, you know, to help serve others, to take care of this task. He had taught him how to put this together, and now he was wanting to give him that freedom in completing that task. Um, it wasn't that, you know, Donnie couldn't have done it himself or that I couldn't have helped, but he was using that opportunity to teach his son. And, you know, what if his son failed? What if, what if something went wrong? Um, what did it have ruined the day? Not at all. Um, you know, he could have stepped in and seen where he needed to instruct him more, uh, find out what those failures were, and, and remedy it to, to help his son grow. And it, it, it built his son's confidence. And, and I learned a lot from that. It, it, it just really hit me. Um, and... Uh, it, it was a wonderful opportunity for, for him to, to help his son, and I learned so much just from that one interaction with, with that family. Uh, in our scout troop, we use this method to great effect. We uh, train our scouts initially, 
And then we give them the freedom and opportunities to lead the rest of the scouts. Uh, it's a safe place to fail. Uh, Joe read my notes, so he knows this story's coming up. He, he thinks this one's really funny. Um, on one of his early campouts, Sam was in charge of buying and cooking the food. Uh, it's usually not a very popular job, so they always foist it off on the new kids. You know, the, 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 they say, oh, you need this to advance, and, and they do. They, they need to learn it, um, but the, the older kids, you know, they, they like to have the younger ones do it. So it was uh, Sam's turn, and he put his menu together, brought it to the older scouts, as is the... the procedure, and they approved it. They, they looked at the shopping list, they marked everything off like, yeah, this is approved. And uh, um, so then I took Sam off to, to go shopping, and we're buying the stuff. And, and I'm going on this camp out as well, so I'm eating this food. I, I, I know it's coming up. Uh, so I'm looking at his list, we're buying the stuff, and he's making macaroni and cheese for one of the meals, and there's no milk on the list. It, it's just not on there. Um, so I, I kind of had a decision to make there. I, I could point that out and, you know, hey, this was an oversight. You know, the, the, the older scouts missed it. And, and uh, um, let's, you know, buy this little bit of milk here. We'll enjoy our mac and cheese. Um, but I decided not to. And, and knowing what that would mean for me, you know, that coming weekend as well. So we get to the camp out, cooking everything, and get ready to make the mac and cheese, look at the pot, and there's, there's no milk. So the older scouts are like, oh, why didn't you buy the milk? And he's like, I gave you my shopping list, you, you know, he, and he didn't know. And so then a couple of the adults were looking at me because they're like, why didn't you buy it? And I'm like, oh, just, you know. So it was a, it was a failure. Um, has anybody eaten mac and cheese without milk? It, uh, it's... It's edible, right? No, nobody went hungry. Um, and so it was a failure. It, it helped Sam learn. Um, the next few months, the older scouts were much more diligent about reviewing the, the shopping lists. Um, it was an opportunity, and uh, you know, it, it, it worked out well. It, it, nobody you know, got hurt or there was no problems. And, and so uh, it, it's just a tool that, that we can use to help others. It's a tool that God uses to, to help us. Um, but we have to make sure we do it with love and care. We don't want to, um, you know, see somebody fail that is going to be dangerous or, oh, hey, you know, doesn't look like your brakes are working very well. You know, I'm, I'm going to let you find that out. No, you know, <laughs> you should probably step in and, and, you know, help people out in that way. Um, so let's read uh, from our, our next scripture there. John 21, 15 through 17. So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, Lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, Lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him a third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, feed my sheep. So this, this is a, a scripture passage which uh, you know, really strikes me. Um, while Peter suffered greatly, or he suffered great anguish at having failed to keep his word to Jesus about de not denying him, Jesus used that failure to strengthen Peter and to embolden him. Uh, Peter was truly sorry for his sin. It grieved him to be reminded of it. It's, it's no accident that Jesus asked him three times. Uh, it, it was you know, a direct relation back to that, uh, that night. When Peter failed, he didn't turn from God. He used that mistake to strengthen his faith, to learn from it, and to make an incredible impact for the kingdom of God. Uh, I think about this verse, and it, it makes me just wonder what, what effect that had um, after Peter, you know, had this, this meeting with Christ, um, how he reaffirmed that. Um, but people that were tortured, 
or asked to, you know, deny their faith in Christ after this, the martyrs, um, they could look back to this scripture and, and see what happened to Peter when he failed, when he denied Christ, and what he went through, and how Christ loved him, and restored him, forgave him, and made him the rock that the church was built on. And later, Peter was crucified. Um, but, but just, you know, the, the Bible is so full of, of wonderful examples. This one just, just really stood out to me about how God uses that failure. He, he, you know, he knew that failure was coming. And he knew that, you know, he would restore Peter and fully forgive him for that. Um, we contrast that with the failure of Judas, how he turned away from God after his failure. Um, and th there's just so many important lessons that, that we have in that. Um, I urge you to not let the fear of failure hold you back. Uh, God will do great works through you. When you do fail, do not pass on the opportunity to search for the lesson that God has for you in that experience. Pray, work hard to recover from your failure. Repent and turn away from your sin. Seek help from others. There's so many wonderful people that you can turn to, to to help you with your fails, to help you with what you're struggling with. And also, please use this way to help others that may be struggling with similar circumstances. Uh, we see many people in our lives, and, and it's no accident that God puts certain people in our lives for us to be able to reach out to them. Um, it, uh, he's calling on us to, to use our experiences, to use some of the, the grief we've had in, in our sin that uh, we need to be able to use the lessons we've learned from God to help others in our lives.